So I have these mental models of what it is to be great at leaders at leadership, and it simplifies the task of being a great leader. With technology, though, I said, what is the model for getting better and better at technology, for being a great technologist or a great tech expert? If you really take a step back, there really isn't a lot of education on how to get progressively better with technology. I couldn't find a definition from anybody on what it really was to be good with technology. We would use that term tech savvy and try to nail it down to a few things, but it was pretty vague. So I said it should be the ability to become a lifelong learner, a strategic tech learner. Something that came to my mind, and this is with working with executives, healthcare people, they, their jobs are centered on people, operations, not technology. And you think of the growth mindset by Carol Dweck, where she says, if you don't have a growth mindset, you will not venture into the unknown of exploring and doing things that are not in your, you know, your expertise stack. It takes that growth mindset of doing something and failing, even if you're not good at it, to really venture off into tech and things like that. What are the real world applications where Gen AI is currently used in your experience? Katrina was talking earlier about going through and using Gen AI to create job aids. That's one of those things that I am really keen on. You know, it's like just trying to get the things first started, trying to get some new ideas, see what else is out there technology wise. So job aids is a huge one for us L&D professionals. It really is. The, the amazing amount of time that it gives uh, the coworkers on your team back to be able to focus those instructional design efforts to higher higher return, more strategic work has been really important for our team. What's, what I think is so great is you can build the course outline and then you can say, give me a, a scenario for people to practice this skill and it'll give you a scenario. And then you'll say, okay, make the scenario harder for this particular skill. And then it'll give you another scenario. And then it'll say, provide a role play exercise that would da 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 da. And then it'll give you suggestions for that. And then give me a rubric for how I might facilitate a discussion and see other facilitators or whatever. And then it gives you a rubric on how to do that. So, I mean, it's it just gives you the starting point of everything. I had these, the scenario was a manager is trying to manage conflict and manage the, the team through the forming storming. So I fed chat GPT this descriptions of a manager. He, she has five people who report to her. And these are, these are the, the general characteristics of these five people. I had, I had already developed that. And I, what I wanted was uh, to create a scenario where the people who were doing this virtual classroom live interactive session, but it was a dialogue between all the characters and, uh, you know, showing conflict. And, and then my question was, well, how, how would, how is a manager recognizing what phase they're informing, storming, or norming, and how do they deal with the conflict? And I couldn't have done all of that in the short amount of time that, you know, that I, that Chad GBT, it just saved me a lot of time. We're looking at using other technologies and we don't want to go down a rabbit hole on that. But one of the things we want to make sure we're doing is that when there's different people on our team, they're all going at it from the same direction. You know, in our case, we're creating learning content for underwriters. Uh, the underwriting community and we want to make sure that when we're going to create something that if we're doing it for a construction property underwriter for an example we're all starting from the same point and so that way the the content we're creating continues to be consistent for me the the uh, utilization of microsoft copilot which is different for different organizations and people within the organizations are and a great one to get started on if you have you're trying to get your folks to adopt uh, AI is to utilize, uh, and if you are using an organization using Microsoft Teams, is to utilize the Copilot's ability to summarize the meeting notes from a recording. So, turning the recording on, step one, you'll see a transcript starting to flow, which is nice. But then at the end of the meeting, you can ask it to summarize it, uh, prioritize stuff, and then you can give it prompts to maybe put the big meeting outcome at the top and bullet point my action items below that, and then just give me bullet pointed meeting uh, insights that happened. So you can even simplify what it's putting out there. Like a lot of people are saying, I, I didn't get what I wanted first. I eventually got it. But I think it was pretty impressive uh, to show people that. And, and that's a really big part of the TQ aspect is what's the most impressive thing you want to show that first.